Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and this is dedicated to all those spirits out there who believe life is meant to be magical and fun. Here we venture to share the very mysteries of self and reality. My purpose is to help light that spark inside of you, to reawaken your sense of fascination and awe towards the world. I'm going to try to help you hack reality and unleash your potential and open unlimited possibilities of wealth, health, and relationships in your life. Welcome to the reality. Welcome to the reality revolution. Today, I am incredibly excited. I cannot tell you how excited I am to have Stephen Barnes. Man, I'm I'm giddy right now. I'm nervous. I'm, I cannot tell you how exciting this is. I've Thanks, known Steve, Steve forever. <laughs> I have known Steve. Let me give you a little bit of background for the people that may not know. I don't know how you can't, but I may not know. This is the perfect mix. First of all, I'm a huge sci-fi fan. So my first exposure to Steve, Steve has written episodes of Stargate, of Andromeda, of uh, he has a novelette based on uh, Deep Space Nine. He's actually written a Star Wars novel. So many different things. He's written with Larry Niven, some incredible books. I have so many books in my collection that I've read that I recommend blood brothers, uh, iron shadows is great. Charisma is wonderful. Uh, the Kundalini equation, one of the best, I think that was my first exposure. I remember I was about 14 and I saw this paperback and it was just fascinating. And I cannot believe I get a chance to talk to Steve right now. People are maybe asking, why am I talking to this science fiction writer? What people may not know is that Steve is also has participated as a life coach and has deep knowledge. Just to give you a little bit, uh, you may actually know Steve as Tanner Eve Dew's husband <laughs> because she's also a great writer. There's um, from the history, if you, Steve's father used to sing with Nat King Cole, as I understand, um, as a background singer. Um, and we've talked about some of his um, books. He, writes so much, but he's also an avid practitioner of martial and physical arts. And um, if you follow his Facebook page, he talks about a lot of that stuff. He is, uh, he's been studying it since 1969. He has a black belt in Kempo Karate and Kodokan Judo. He holds an instructor certificate in Wu Ming Ta and has an instructor candidate ranking in F Filipino Kali stick and knife fighting. He's an advanced student in Jun Fan kickboxing and is an instructor in Wu style Tai Chi Chuan under Hawkins Chung. He's an intermediate student in self-defense pistol shooting. He holds a brown belt in Serenji Jiu-Jitsu and an intermediate ranking in Taekwondo. At least this is what I'm getting from, from your Wikipedia page, just to give you some background. But the thing that I am most interested to talk to Steve about, because he has talked about the law of attraction and some of the, the techniques that he has used. So I don't, I don't even know where to get started, but I'm so excited. How are you doing today, Steve? You know, I'm doing great. I, I got... I woke up this morning, and I always start with a daily ritual. We can talk about that, um, mm -hmm. one that has to do with the law of attraction. Uh, and then I, I, I map out what are the most important things for me to get done today. So I've done that. I've done yoga and martial arts and tai chi and uh, did, uh, I w did kettlebells with my wife. I love, love working out with her. I got you know four pages done on one project, polished another project, and did five pages on a on a fiction writing project that I've been trying to get going for for almost 10 years, a, a graphic novel. And so, you know, the rest of the day is mine. I, I you know, got my son off to football after sitting him down and talking to him about the law of attraction. You know, I don't oh, call wow. in, in those particular words, and we, we can go into that. Yeah. How, I, I call it the magic formula, mm -hmm. but it's the same, it's the and, same and thing. And I definitely want to talk about your, your magic yeah, formula that absolutely. you talked about. And I've broken it down so that my 15-year-old football-playing son who is really in that, you know, I don't care, I don't care, place, right. you know, his development, where he understands that that he's willing to accept me slipping in some wisdom. I'm, I'm, what I'm looking at right now is these, these the next five years of his life, right. three years of, of high school, maybe two years of, of junior college, this is the period that I'm going to get to affect him for the rest of his life. This and I is, want to talk about how, also, that's sure. a question for later, is how, how we teach it to our kids. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, to we, begin, let's let's begin with that. You, One of the most important things, and that I've learned from you, a large part of my morning routine, I've learned from you. Um, I, I incorporate the five Tibetans, but I really want to get a, a specific breakdown of your morning routine and how it's changed and, and affected you to help other people that are, are listening. So, 
when you wake up in the morning, you, you okay, so open your eyes and start from there. The very first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I envision my body as if it's a sack filled with syrup. Syrup is kind of dark. And right. I, I, I will see how long it takes for the syrup to kind of drain out. And what I wait is for my body to feel light mm -hmm. and cool. If it feels heavy and dark, then I know that there's still fatigue in there. And what I will try to do is to sleep until that drains away. But after that, the first thing I do is I'll connect with kind of my child self, you know, the, the about an eight-year-old version of me right. the sitting down with my tailbone. So if I sit up at that point, at some point I'll sit up there. But I just kind of connect with him and kind of I might spend a little – but a, a few of those moments, you know, between sleep and between when, when you're sleeping and when you wake up, it's called the hypnagogic state. Right. And it's a hyper state. And you can actually use that for, you know, fantasizing, lucid dreaming or imprintation. You know, what is it that I want to do today? So right. I will use that to kind of get in touch with my instincts. That little kid inside me, you know, how are you doing today, Stevie? You know, is everything OK? And just 10 to 20 minutes meditating in a seated position, I'll get up brush my teeth, wash my face, put in my contact lenses, make myself a cup of tea, and right. then I'll sit down with, probably with Brandon Bouchard's right. high performance plan, which I really like, mm -hmm. and I, I'm trying to understand that in the five months since I've been using his stuff, but I'll tend to focus on one person's stuff for about a year, and I'll go deep into it, and then I'll try something else. So right. he has uh, six high performance principles, um, the clarity, energy, um, Let's see, let's see, clarity, necessity. energy, that's right, ne necessity, productivity, influence, and courage. You're right. And so I'll, I'll, I'll make, I'll put together his, uh, his journal, I'll, I'll, I'll fill it out and, and, and look at those things, uh, and then I will do what I consider my formal morning ritual. And that, you know, I'm a little bit lazy, I might, you know, browse some emails and right. get on the face. Look and see. But the formal morning ritual, which I've been doing now for maybe six, seven years, is I do it while I'm moving. And specifically, I'll do it while I'm doing Tai Chi. Okay. And I will start by chanting, uh, making chants out loud, you know, something along the lines of, of every day and every way I'm getting better and better. Or God's wealth is circulating in my life. His wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance. All I, all my needs, desires, dreams, and goals come to me instantly because I am one with God, and God is everything. And you're that doing kind of that thing. while moving, right? That's right. That's okay. the key. That's the key. You have to be moving while you're doing it because the voices in your head, the demon voices, are going to try to say, "Oh, this is crap." But if one of your goals, what if one of my goals is to get better at Tai Chi, for instance? then simply performing Tai Chi is a step along that path. So the voice saying, well, this doesn't work, has to compete with the reality of the fact that I'm actually doing it, you see? And right. so that's the whole thing, that, that you're, you want to separate out those voices so that you start becoming aware of when you're real and when you're not real, you know, which, which voices in your head are real and not real. So I'll start with, with, with the, the, the confidence, you know, every day and every way I'm getting better and better, a statement about, where I am in life and what's going on in life mm -hmm. and, and the reality of my life. Then I'll go from there to giving thanks, gratitude, giving thanks for blessings I already have. And that would be, I, 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 I'm so grateful for a strong, healthy body. I'm so grateful for a strong, healthy mind. You know, and I'm so grateful for the people who love me and trust me. My son, Jason, my daughter, Nikki. See, uh, one, of, one of the top NLP uh, trainers in the world, I'm, I spent five hundred five thousand dollars to spend a weekend with this guy one on one, right. um, just to have him get into my head. And he discovered that anytime I'm talking about my daughter or my kids now, mm -hmm. uh, my energy would in immediately pop. No matter what, where, no matter how tired I was, no matter what, anytime he got me to think about my daughter, bang, I'm there. Okay? Right. So it is that sense of of feeling grateful for the love and, and my, my ability to contribute and you know it's the blessings of my family and my beautiful brilliant wife and my sister Joyce and I'll go through my blessings you know for Larry Niven and, and Mr. Muhammad and I, I will literally think about all of the things in my life that are already wonderful mm -hmm. see because if you don't believe that you've already experienced blessings why would you believe that tomorrow is going to be better than today. Why would you believe in anything? Why bother trying if you don't believe in it? So 
the trick is to is to look at is to watch yourself as you give thanks for the blessings of your past and what you already have what is your physiology what's your tone of voice how are you using your face how how are you moving then when you talk about your long term goals which which have both long-term goals and the things that I have to do today to make them happen. I try to use the same physiology. Right. See, in other words, I use the same tone of voice, the same body movement while I'm talking about what I will do or what I will have that I use talking about what I've already got. So mm -hmm. I'm tricking my body into total confidence that I can do this, that I should do this. So, uh, and so I will go through, so it'll be the, the blessings of the past, give thanks for the successes that are to come, and then I will close things out with, with, with more gratitude. I'm so grateful. Um, that, uh, no, it's the all I need is within me now. All, all the strength I need is within me now. All the love I need is within me now. And mm -hmm. I'll go through Bennett Bouchard's, you know, right. thing, you know, all, all the clarity, you know, all the energy, you know, all the everything. What's the third one? I, I keep forgetting. It's I've always raised forget it. I have it up on my board here. Seek clarity, yeah. generate energy, raise the necessity, right. necessity. increase productivity. And that's and, uh, right. Yeah. You know, clarity, energy, necessity, productivity, influence. And influence right. Know? So I will actually, I'll say those things and I'll listen to the tone of my voice. You know, if I need more energy, if I need more, if I'm having problems, then during that 10 minutes, 20 minutes when I'm doing the Tai Chi, all I have to do is do it more intensely, make mm -hmm. deep the stance, raise my voice, you know, put more force into it. I will, you know, if it, it, it's my, it's my diagnostic for the day as well as my right. medicine for the day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's my basic, that's my basic morning routine. Wow. So when, let me ask specifically, when you wake up, how yeah. soon do you start drinking water? How soon, when do you start eating? Water, you know, basically I, I'll, I'll wake up about 20 minutes, I'll meditate, and then, then I will um, make myself a cup of tea. Okay. And the tea has, they're very specific things. I have medium chain triglycerides. There's right. um, a, a, something called Fast Blast made by uh, Dirk Pearson and Sandy Shaw over Life Extension that is basically... Uh, Caffeine and the cofactors that make phenylalanine, uh, mm -hmm. the you know acid that that you're that uh, no yeah, yeah um, caffeine caffeine causes a norepinephrine dump. Then it, right. it sensitizes you to norepinephrine. No, no, it's cocaine that causes a norepinephrine dump, which is why that, that's <laughs> right. so savage. Um, but ca caffeine sensitizes you to your brain's version of adrenaline, norepinephrine. So the the amino acid that your body uses to make that neurotransmitter is phenylalanine. And so what Dirk Pearson and Sandy Shaw did was they made this stuff that combines caffeine and phenylalanine and a few other cofactors. So your brain is not only sensitized, but it actually is getting the building block that it needs to make it in the first place. Okay. Which is so what was that again? Let's so, so I don't forget the, you said that what you put in your tea, it's the, okay. The first thing I put in my tea is medium MCT chain. oil. Yeah. MCT right. oil. Um, and then it's it's fast blast, you know, which is uh, fast blast, ca ca caffeine and phenol right. phenylalanine. And then there is um, something called amrit kalash, which okay. is an herbal jam, um, a ghee, you know, a clarified right. butter plus herbs. It's it's just an an Ayurvedic uh, herb herbal supplement that I've taken right. for maybe twenty five years. I'm putting it on my list. <laughs> so it's when, it's when, you gotta experiment with this stuff and see. Yeah. What yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm a collector and I'm just collecting yeah. morning routines all the time. So when yes. you meditate, is it better to meditate after you do your workout or before? Do you find before? I meditate, I meditate first thing in the morning. But if you're doing it afterwards, that's fine. Yeah. You know, I, I, like to, I like to set my tone for the day, you know, and I will go up my chakras and I, will, I have, you know, different, you know, if I have four major goal sets in the world, mm -hmm. There is my career, so I, I want a movie. A, a, a right, theatrical right. picture is my last major goal that I have in my life. I got everything else I ever wanted. Right. Um, I I want my son to get, be getting straight A's, okay, because of what that means to him. If he can do that and be enjoying his life at the same time, he has become the young man that I know he's capable of being. Um, and because my wife and I are very connected on that, what works well there also works well for our marriage. So it's you know so it's 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 art movie 
family, Jason getting straight A's, uh, business, I want to make a million dollars on my internet business. Right. Um, and then there are some very specific things I'm doing. They're joined what's called the Two Comma Club at mm-hmm. over, over the funnels. And um, there's, a, there's a fourth, oh, my body. Uh, I, I have some very specific goals that require that I need to increase my energy and clarify my energy at a time when, you know, I'm supposed to be slowing down and retiring. Right. So the question is, I had, well, what can I do to, to acknowledge the reality that I've got less energy now than I had when I was 30, but what I can do is manage it better. I can right. manage okay. it much better. And mm-hmm. I can be more like a laser and, and accomplish the exact things that need to be accomplished rather than just like a searchlight with the energy going in all directions. Right. That's what I used to do. like, woo! <laughs> uh, now, you know, most of the time I'm pretty laid back. I'll, I, I'll pump my energy up for something like this because it's right. appropriate. Okay. So um, I decided I think I want to join the, you know, I, you, you read off my, my bona fides in terms of martial arts. Back in the late 70s, I was training with Danny Asanto, uh, Bruce Lee's heir, heir uh, in the Filipino Kali Academy, Filipino stick fighting and knife wow. fighting and stuff like that. And I, was, and I was also kickboxing there. And I was an instructor candidate, but I never went through the instructor pr- training program. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking, you know something? Danny is still alive. He's 82 years old. He is an absolute walking miracle. Right. Um, and he knows who I am. I mean, he would recognize me easily on the street. To have somebody at his level where there is a personal connection, I said, you know something? I'm going to humble myself and ask him if I can join his instructor training program. I'd be, I'd be older than any of the other people in the, in the program. Right. But it would force me to bring my A game. Right. And have that physical goal would force me to take care of my body better, make sure I'm resting fully, and that energy I could then use over here in my career. So, so when, I mean, when do you, when do you, I'm sorry, when do you go to bed? Usually, uh, what's your, you, you do you sleep eight, oh, a full eight to hours? Bed. During the, uh, you bet your ass I get eight hours. I, right. I mean, if I get laid less than eight hours of sleep, I fall apart. Okay. But if I get all the rest I need, I never get sick. I mean, really, right. for all practical purposes, this is true. I never get sick. But if I don't get the sleep I need, my body falls apart. My body starts remembering how long I've been on the planet. I do not want it remembering how long I've been on the planet. So I usually go to bed because my son has to get up. He uh, has to be at school by 8.20 or something like that. I usually have to get up by 6.30 Right. Which means that I would start waking up by six, which means that I should go to bed at ten, except that I don't. I usually mm-hmm. go to bed at eleven, but my but I'm going to be staying in bed until seven o'clock when the next semester comes up. So my wife pointed out to me that Jason does not need me until about eight o'clock in until the morning. I get a certain number of things taken care of, but I won't work out before I I work with him. But I I might just do, I might do the tai chi and a little bit of martial arts before mm-hmm. I before. I, so during the summer, I don't want to get too far off that schedule. So I'm, I'm going to bed at 11, 11.30. Right. So you, that brings me then, do you have an evening routine before you go to bed that you've integrated into your total routine? Yeah, kind of. I mean, in the, evening, uh, in the evenings, my wife and I get together and we watch movies and we watch right. television. You know, we'll binge watch something on Netflix or watch a DVD of the Larry Sanders show and have a good laugh together or watch a good scare. And then the last 15 minutes before I go to sleep, I'm probably going to watch an episode of Robot Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah that's I love good. Robot Chicken, man. That works. It's so silly and stupid. <laughs> and, uh, and then I might meditate. Uh, I will, I'll definitely fill out my journal in the evening. You right. Know, my journal in the morning, journal in the mm-hmm. evening. Um, and I might very well, uh, do a little bit of meditation. I started doing a little bit of meditation in the evening, just kind of checking in again, kind of thinking, well, how has the day been? You know, mm-hmm. did I get everything taken care of? You know, am I ready to die? In essence, if I, if I die tonight, you know, now I, now I lay me down to sleep, you know, right. it's this been a good day. Have I, have I contributed? Have I given love to the world? Have I, have I helped anyone today? If I didn't help somebody today, I, I I'm I'm likely to go look for somebody to help. You know, I mean, find somebody right. on Facebook. I love that. Yeah. Trouble something. Let me get in 
some contribution to the world. You need to do that because there are so many voices that we hear that say that we should not aim at high levels of accomplishment. You know, right? Uh, we, you know, it's it's too much to ask for. So if you get the feeling every time I bump up a notch, every every win that I get, I'm going to help the world. Mm -hmm. Everything I do. I'm going to be as much used to the world as possible. You do that and you start feeling like, well, gee, I guess I need to get rich for the good of the world, don't I? Right. <laughs> right. It's not just about me. I, mm -hmm. I need to be successful so that I can show other people how to be successful. So I can help other people. We just, to be honest about it, we just helped out some people who were who found themselves homeless. And, mm -hmm. you know, I won't go into it too much, but they're on the other side of the country. And, you know, it took us several thousand dollars to get them out of that out of that problem and on a bus to to where they can where they to a place where they they have some resources mm -hmm. to be able to do that for Tanana Rape to come to me and say Steve this is what it's going to cost you know can we do this and I, I looked at it and look at our finances and say yeah we can do this and wow. it's the kind of thing we should do this is this is this is who we are in the world and to know that I have a woman who believes and trusts that I would get that, that she believes and trusts in me and I, you know, and, and would align with me that we have the capacity to be abundant enough that we can do that. Wow. Uh, that is meaningful to me. You know, that I feel, right. like, you know, I, I get to feel like I'm a good guy. I'm one of the good guys. Right. I help, you know, I have no doubts about the fact that I deserve to be friggin' rich. So that, that brings me to one of my, your favorite, my favorite teachings of yours. I remember that you were talking about the first time that you read The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. And you, right. mentioned, and you mentioned that your ego had kind of didn't want you to know this information, that you, after you had read it, you had kind of, you noticed that you had to go back and specifically write out some of the, that there was a point in time where you realized that your ego was fighting you on uh, acquisition of some of this knowledge. Look, Am I right? It's a great story. Yeah. Um, what happened is that uh, due to family emergency, we had to move to Atlanta. Right. Um, and um, it was devastating to me mm -hmm. because it disrupted my writing career in New York, and it also disrupted my writing career in Hollywood. It doomed my writing career in Hollywood. Right. Um, and I was, I was just shattered. Um, I, I, did, I had no idea. It was one of those times when it felt like my life was over. The, the, the roadmap that I'd created from childhood on how to guide my life had just evaporated. Right. I thought. Turned out to be a great advantage to you. Well, it ended up being that, but it didn't right. look that way from where I was. Right. You know, so from looking back from where I am, 100% agreement. Right. But at that time, it felt like death. It, the mm -hmm. amount of pain, I said, it felt, the amount of pain I experienced when my mother was dying, it was that level of pain every right. month. Okay. So I, I realized that one of the things that I had stopped doing was giving myself input of the best philosophical and practical advice about how do you run your life. And my mother got me started with that, with thinking go rich and the power of positive thinking and psycho cybernetics and the golden key and the strangest secret and right. the diamonds and a message to Garcia and on and on and on. <laughs> you, know, and like, you know, she would have this, you know, LP of, of thinking grow rich, you know, and she would play this thing over and over again. until I thought I was going to go nuts, but you know, something it sank in, right? just sank in mm -hmm. um and so i started going back through some of my old books i had read that the 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 the, the secret the law of attraction mm -hmm. uh, had been based on a couple of earlier books there were some earlier books that were very important to the writing of it and one of those was the science of getting rich by right. models it was available free on the internet so i downloaded a copy of it and i read it well, no, no, no. I think I bought a copy of it at the time. I bought a copy of it and I read it. And then I read it again a second time. And I could remember nothing. Right. I literally could remember nothing of what was in that book. It was like, <laughs> what the heck? Have I got a tumor? <laughs> I mean, what's going on here? It's just literally in one ear and out the other. I, My brain would not hold what this book was saying. So All I right. said, you know something? I suspect that there's some part of me that does not want to hear this. 
that there's something in this book that is threatening to me. So mm -hmm. what I did was I would read one page at a time and read it over and over and over again. And then I would write a one sentence uh, condensation of what was on that page. Right. If I had to read the page for an hour, I would mm -hmm. do it two hours. Then I'd go to the next page and I'd do the same thing. So it took me a couple of weeks to go through this little tiny book, 60 pages like this, writing down one sentence to represent the basic content of each page. That gave me a, uh, a document that was maybe three pages long. Then I went through that document and I boiled that down. And I went through that document and I boiled that down and boiled that down and boiled that down until after a couple of weeks, I had four words that roughly, you know, we've, we, I've done some changing to this now to make an easily memorable, memorable uh, mnemonic. Right. Magic. It was the mm -hmm. word magic, the acronym magic. Ma magic equals action times gratitude times in intention times confidence. Right. And the key to that is the times, meaning if any of those are zero, yes, all of them are you, zero. You and got I love it. that. If you have, if you, if you put each of them on a scale of zero to nine, right. If you've got, if you're taking no action, you get nothing. Right. If you're taking action without gratitude, without your heart being filled with love already, you're going to end up chasing accomplishment, trying to get a feeling that cannot. You can feelings are not directly connected to external events or possessions. You can have all the external events and possessions in the world and feel totally hollow. So you have to start by feeling grateful. And then if you don't have a you know, in clear intention, what is it mm -hmm. you're trying to accomplish? Right. What are you trying to do? And then the confidence or the conviction. You have to believe that you can and should have this. Mm -hmm. that you have to, so you have to take action. You need to start with, with gratitude. You need to have a clear idea of what you're trying to accomplish. And you have to have the belief that you can and should do this. That your efforts to do this will lead you to more pleasure than pain. If right. you believe on some level, well, it's possible, but if I do it, it's going to hurt. You're going to dr be driving with your brakes on. Mm -hmm. So if you have a zero in any one of those, the whole thing is zero. But if you have at least a one in, right. all, in all of them, now anything that you do, if I've got a one in terms of, of, of confidence, I just believe a little bit that I'm taking a lot of action right. and gratitude for where I am and I have a clear sense of my goal, I'm going to be kicking butt. You know, and if I can get that up to at least a two or a three, if I, you know, it's like so right now, you know, if I was to take a look at where I am today in terms of uh, finishing this graphic novel, oh, God, you know, I, 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 what? Some goal in my life, you know. Right. Let's say finishing the graphic novel. You know, in terms sure. of action, I took five pages of action on that today. You know, in terms of gratitude, God, I'm so grateful because I've been trying to get this going for ten years, and mm -hmm. I finally found someone who's willing to put out some money. You know, to you know, to to publish it, and I have the opportunity to work with Charles Johnson, who's one of my idols and a friend, and you know, a literary writer of note, and he wants to work on this with with little old me. And it's like, wow, awesome, yeah. It's just great. In mm -hmm. clear intentions, yeah, it's going to be about 240 pages, graphic novel. I can see what it is. I've got books. I've got the, the annotated Watchmen, you know, sitting over here. Right, right. Uh, you know, yeah, best graphic novel oh. ever written, man. This, a, this, this, a definite this, favorite, no doubt about it. <laughs> every page. I did not know there was an annotated edition. Oh, so yeah. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You know, so right. I am not messing around. Right. You know, so, uh, and then my confidence. I believe that if I bring everything I have to this, it could be outstanding. And that's, that is my, that is my commitment. So I've got, I'm taking action. I've got gratitude. I have a clear vision of what I want and I believe in myself. Nothing can stop me if I've got all four of those. That's why I was so excited to have you on. You're very authentic. You put on Facebook live videos all the time. And, and, and a lot of times this is just you having this deep desire to help at least one person out there. I see that. You, I mean, if you know that you reach out one person with some of your teachings and that was a real breakthrough with me when, when you, with the magic was that if you take one step and, and you're not in any of those other things are zero, it's worthless. Nope. And it's just, so just, just the idea that I need to integrate gratitude and action in all of yeah. these things, even just a little bit. And, and once I started doing that, it's a big difference. And it's something anybody it's listening to this. And so you, you, do, you do your show 
for a right. younger version of you. Right. Exactly. Like, That's what exactly I, what I'm doing. What do I wish I could have heard 20 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever it is. Right. And if you do that, then you're being authentic. So yeah. I'm always talking to a younger version to of yourself times to my daughter, you know, right. a younger female version of me. The rest of you guys are just looking over my shoulder at, my, at me having a conversation <laughs> with you right. or me. That's, right. that's all. It, and if I do that, then I'm being honest. And if I'm like right now, I'm working on a product. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it has the potential to be the best thing I've ever done. Basically, it was a lady named Dawn Callan. I mentioned her as being the, the female half of my martial arts training. She taught a women's self-defense workshop where in two days mm -hmm. she could teach women how to access their survival drive in a way that most martial arts schools can in two years. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. She was, she was amazing. And it's taken me decades for her to trust me enough to be willing to talk to me about the spiritual Ooh. core of this kick-ass work of hers. It's like model right. mugging spiritual you know core um and the question we have is what what can be communicated without putting people through a live combat experience and there is a lot it, it, right. it the way we look at it it's going to require some kind of a physical discipline but that could conceivably be breathing or walking it right. doesn't have to be getting hit in the face although getting hit in the face is very useful instant feedback um and if I do this, then I'm going to do this for the young man that I was, who had so much problem with fear. Um, it took me 17 years to earn my first black belt because I was dealing with so much fear, and I had fear. no understanding of how to cope with it. No, right. I had I had no one to help me understand what was going on inside me. Um, and when I finally found those resources and began to stack them up, um, I, I created in myself exactly the kind of human being I was looking to create. It's not that right. you don't have fear. It's that the fear is in a proper perspective in your life. Most people, it's like they're, they're, they are here, they're right. here, and the thing that they want is here, and the fear is in between them. Right. You know, so they can't get to what they're looking for because of the fear. All you have to do is switch that around so that you're here, what you want is here, and the fear is back here. Right. Same amount of fear. Mm -hmm. But now you're more concerned with dying without expressing yourself to the world, of, of being inauthentic. You've made your peace with the fact that no matter what you do, you're going to die. And once you make peace with that, and it might, in a, however long it takes you to do that, then you understand that what's critical is the way that you're living. The, you know, what are you committed to? What, what is important to you? Um, and when you get clear on that, both that there is no way to stop yourself from dying and that there are things that you want to do to affect the world beyond the envelope of your death. You're using the fear of death to actually motivate yourself to action and consistent right. action and to connect yourself to, to a comp not accomplishment, but to to values in the world. You know, what's more important than your own life? You know, love is more important. People, people growing and evolving is more important. My children are important to me. You know, racial harmony in America is important to me. My country is important mm -hmm. to me. Humanity is important to me. Life on earth is important to me. So you go out from the, the, the personal and the specific and you move outwards as close to the universal as you can get. When you do that, then the fear is what makes me wake up every morning and embrace life. The fear is what right. makes me hug my every day, but makes me reach out and tell my daughter that I love her, makes me kiss my wife every day and tell her how grateful I am that she has chosen to spend her life with me, makes mm -hmm. me take Larry Niven out for Father's Day right. to understand that, 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 my journey of life goes one way. I don't get to go back and do things. So I want to be as good as I can possibly be to the people who helped me without whom I could not be who I am. So that's, that's what I do with my fear. Right. Everybody has right. fear. It the feels like we're right now in a moment in, in our country where we have a choice between fear and love and we're not dealing with our fears. We're dealing with it. 
we're dealing with them. You know, it's just that we're not dealing with them in, a, in an elegant way. That this is a <laughs> moment of, for my position, right. this is a moment of evolution, and mm -hmm. you know, we're and we're going to get through it. And people have been through much worse things than this, right? Uh, and it's, but it's still painful. I, I, it, it, I feel pain for my country. I feel pain for yeah. the people who are afraid of change and mm -hmm. pain people who, who want change and are afraid that it will never come. That on both sides, there is a, a lack of faith in, in, in the dream of what America is. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never lost that faith. Right. And I, I love my country. One uh, of, the, th one of the things that really stands out in your career, in your epic life <laughs> that you've had, you have uh, a remarkable ability to acquire mentors, incredible mentors that have uh, along the way, you go back and look at anybody. Uh, and, and so I have to ask you, what if I, what if somebody wants to get that mentor, uh, like Larry Niven, uh, one of your first books, the locust, I think was your first story that you wrote with Larry Niven. Yes. And then of course, there's been a ton of books that you've written together. The dream park series is great. The uh, legacy of, uh, the legacy of here, what was which third, the third legacy of Herod book is going to be coming out early next year. Oh, we, sweet, those are good. I, and you worked with Jerry Purnell as well. And so, for for the person that's in your position when you were younger, how do you go about finding a mentor? A lot of times, that's all it takes. But for a lot of people, there's the fear, and a lot of people they don't know. And 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 really, that's all they need is just one good mentor that can take them to the next level. And I think that you're the perfect example of that. And what can we learn from your journey in finding these mentors that have so, changed your life? So here's, here's what I could say. Uh, and the interesting thing, I have a friend named Al Siebert who was known for, Dr. Al Siebert, who's known for his work in human resiliency under mm -hmm. stress. He said to me once, Steve, you have a more ability to find the resources you need to move your life forward than anybody I have ever met. <laughs> It's so, true. I'm. I, I agree with him. Yeah. It, it is kind of interesting. So if I were to, if I were to say, okay, let me take a look at the people who've been the most important mentors to me. How did I get them? As well, meant, yeah. it, there are some cases where it's hard for me to explain how I selected them. In other words, if I, if in say in the terms of the martial arts, I knew what I wanted, which was to live my life without fear inhibiting me. And that translated to a certain level of martial arts mastery, a certain level of physical confidence, along with the aesthetics of beautiful movement. And I went to a martial arts expo and I saw Steve Muhammad, Steve Sanders at that time, doing a, a, a mass attack thing where four or five of his students attacked him. He responded with a level of speed power i have just never i've never seen anything like it right. and in that but there was precision and there was love because he was not hurting his students it was very clear i found out later on that it wasn't even rehearsed you know i got to be one of the students attacking him it was just like attack me and he just wow. did it it was like holy crap <laughs> and so i i went to him and became a student and my fear knocked me out of the class over and over again um but I kept coming back. I, I would study other things. I kept coming back. So I had to know what it was I was looking for. I had to be able to recognize it when I saw it. And then mm -hmm. I had to be willing to put myself in a situation where I had a chance to get to know them. In his case, it was bring my sweat, blood, and money to become a member of the class. But over time, we became friends and family. It right. took a lot of time. I had to be willing to really invest. With, um, with Don Callan, my search for, for martial arts mastery took me to a, a workshop that, that was about connecting spiritual, Native American spiritual practice to martial arts. It was held in the Tehachapi Mountains for 10 days. And I went there and I saw this, woman, this little woman teaching and I saw her power. And so I said, I want to be friends with her. And right. so, like, how can I serve her? So she did these women's self-defense workshops. So I became the first male sponsor of her self-defense workshops. And in the mm -hmm. process, I got to know her. Um, Octavia Butler, I'd been a writer. Wow, that's amazing. I would love to hear this. And um, Octavia, uh, I got to know her a little bit um, in conventions. We were like the only black science fiction writers in the world at that time. So right. we naturally kind of gravitated towards each other. But then totally coincidentally, 
after my mom's death, I moved back to my mom's house, and my mom lived about half a mile away from Octavia's house. Wow. And so we lived walking distance from each other, so we started getting together for dinner and just hanging out. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't drive, so I would actually drive her. So once again, being of service to her. Right. Now, Larry Niven is, if there is a cold-blooded example of this, it's Larry. And I've told right. this many times. It's not nothing I'd be worried about him hearing. Um, I had written a lot of stories, but I it, I hadn't gotten much money for them. I'd sold a few of them, you know, uh, I had a few of them published, you know, been paid in contributors' copies, you know, paid a fifth of a cent a word, that kind of thing. I said, well, this isn't going to do it. Right. You know, let me, where can I find somebody who can help me? Um, and I needed to find somebody who was a real writer who was on the other side of the issue. And so I asked a friend of mine named Otis Allred, who I was working with out in, at Pepperdine University, where I was working at the time. I said, uh, do you know where any real science fiction writers are? And he said, well, he, Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell hang out at the Los Angeles Science Fantasy Society in Burbank, California, every Thursday night. So I said, Larry Niven, Larry Niven. I've heard that name. So I went home and took a look in my library. And I found a book of short stories called All the Myriad Ways. It was a collection of, of his right. stories. And one of those stories is called All the Myriad Ways. It was an alternate time track story. And I thought it was friggin' brilliant. Mm -hmm. I thought it was brilliant. So now I was armed with the ability to say to him, honestly, I admire your work. So I went up to Lostus and I, I saw Larry Niven. I had him pointed out to me. And I walked up to him and I said, hello, Mr. Niven, my name is Stephen Barnes and I'm a writer. And he looked at me and said, okay, tell me a story. <laughs> I found out that from the way I'd come on to him, I had 30 seconds to prove I wasn't an asshole. Oh. So literally, I just mailed off a story that day about a, about a compulsive gambler who hawks his pacemaker. And, and I told him the story and he kind of laughed and he said, okay, so now, you know, so then I said, uh, you know, would you care to read, you know, some more of my stuff? He said, sure. He said he'd read another story of mine, a story of mine. So I gave him an envelope that had three stories in it. The next week I came back, he'd read them. He said he liked them, and we started talking. And I said, I did not know that he worked with, with Jerry Pornell. I said, you know, have you ever considered having a collaborator? And I saw the ice, wham, slam down, because I uh -huh. asked for something too soon. Too soon, right. And I, I, you know, he said, you know, I'm more to work with Jerry Pornell. I've got all the collaborators I want. I said, Thank you very much for your time and, you know, and for reading. I really seriously appreciate it. And, you know, and, you know, just all the best of luck to you. And I turned around and walked away. Right. By doing that, I knew that I'd done that while he still wanted to find out a little bit more about me. Who is this kid? You know, who is this guy? And I knew that if I walked away while he still had questions, that he would come to me. And he did. Ah, okay. I, I sat, I stood in the other room, counted myself, one, one thousand. <laughs> Two, right. uh, it's like a it's like a pretty girl giving you a look back over her shoulder and winking at you <laughs> walking away. You gotta go, you know. It's like creating an emotional vacuum. But and he walked up to me and he said, Well, you know, there was a story I wrote about ten years ago and I was never able to finish it properly. Would you be interested in taking a look at that? And right. I thought to myself for about a billionth of a second. But I paused because I didn't want to say, <laughs> seem too eager and said, yeah, yeah, I'd really like to. And that led to the locust. Now, what oh, I okay. did there, you think about it. I was able to sincerely compliment him. I was able to honestly compliment him. Right. Which means I gave him something. When he challenged me, I had done my homework. Mm -hmm. Tell me a story. I'd done my homework. I created an opening where he's kind of thinking, well, you know, this is an interesting guy. Because remember... People who are accomplished tend to be world-class experts at something that not a lot of people care about, okay? Right. When you meet someone who also cares about the thing they care about, they automatically look at you just a little bit as, well, maybe you're another brother or sister on the path. Mm -hmm. They recognize, they see themselves in you. And if you are carrying your own load, if you're not asking them for something, see, that was the mistake I made. I asked them for right. something soon. You give genuine value first. What can I do for you? Mm -hmm. How can I make your life better? You know, with Dawn, I sponsored a workshop. With Octavia, I, I drove her around. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with Steve Muhammad, I 
I paid money to help support his school, and I showed up and I did the best I could. With Larry Niven, I offered honesty, warmth, sincerity. I genuinely, you know, and then he had the story that he had done and hadn't been able. So that meant that there was something that he was connected to his heart. And if I could find a way to add something to that, I would have helped him accomplish one of his goals. When you right. do that for somebody, when you help somebody accomplish one of their goals, the natural human tendency is reciprocity. That's right. natural. So I think that the most important thing is you start with honest enthusiasm, honest right. admiration. You don't bullshit that. You know, right. if you genuinely admire them, what do you? Why do you want their time? And you you present yourself honestly as I am another seeker on the path. Mm -hmm. Most people who are ha who have accomplished in their lives are happy to meet others who are also on the path because the path is lonely. Right. And it is true to commit for you know ten thousand hours you know, to do something and is willing to carry their own cross and not asking you to do it for them, that's a brother. That's right. a sister. We're all together in this, man. And the horizon is the same distance from all of us. There's, right. nothing, there's nothing superhuman about these people. They mm -hmm. simply did the same thing every day long enough. They just took one step after another step after right. another step until they found themselves beyond the horizon. And the people who've never done that, they look at them and say, oh, my God, it must have been magic. You must be <laughs> a genius. You must be talented. They don't see the work. The work. There's a core talent. In my mind, it's the ability to continue to, to do a grinding, sometimes boring routine day after day after day. Danny Inosanto, who might be the greatest master of any subject I've ever had a chance to sit down and talk to man to man might be the greatest martial arts instructor who ever lived. It's possible. He's in the category. Right. People. He's in there. And he told me, he's, in his, he's 82 now, maybe 15 years ago, he said to me, Steve, you can stay in shape as you get older. It just gets a little harder to motivate yourself every year. Right. You know, I interpret that as the voices that say, quit, give up. Why are you bothering? Get louder and louder every year. Mm -hmm. you know, your body's not being what it was when you were younger is is a reality but the demons in your head stop you more than physical circumstance ever did true so what you do is you you map out a course to the thing that you want and you make sure that the core that the thing you want that it makes you happy to do it i'm happy when i come back from a martial arts class i don't need the certificate at the end of the year right or at the end of three years or five years i'm happy that i did it that day you know, it might be painful to get there. I might have to deal with fear or fatigue, whatever. But man, if I made it through the class, I'd drive home saying, you know, I'm a stud. <laughs> you know, I did it. You right. Know, the writing can be hard, and it is hard. It should be hard every day. There are times when it comes easy, but if you're going to be a pro, you got to do it even when it's hard. You got to be doing it when it's hard. You got to be doing it. It's like, you know, chop wood, carry water. My, the, 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 I did my first writing book, it available at www.chopwoodwriting.com and let me just say that it's awesome because I I wrote my book because of Steve's recommendation of writing a sentence a day and that's right. the and and it I cannot tell you enough how much that helped me um, just so, it, Brian yeah. all you have to do yeah. is the, that idea is called it's the atomic theory of accomplishment mm -hmm. you what is the smallest unit of action that if you do that unit it needs to be something that can easily be done in a day Right. So it's like one sentence a day, okay? Mm -hmm. Three of each of the five Tibetans. Five minutes of meditation, you know, t telling the person you love that I love you, what can I do for you today? Whatever, whatever it is, something tiny so that you cannot lie to yourself and say, I didn't have the time to do it. I don't have the right. time. No, you do. You, you have do. time to Just do one sentence a day. That's right. You do have the time to write mm -hmm. one sentence. Stop lying to yourself. That's the whole thing. That Lying to yourself and fear stop people more than than any external adversary and if you've been poor or deprived or abused it can be so difficult to see that i have right. nothing i bleed for people who've been hurt like that but i will not i will not agree that they can't do it and i am not going to tell them tell that them they can't swimming 
You know, I will not do that. I will say, yes, you have been hurt. Yes, you have been abused. Yes, you have been part of a disadvantaged group. And if you're going to live a happy life, it is your responsibility. Right. I am sorry. That's, you know, the, you're going to have to be the one to swim to shore. All I can do is stand here and say this way to the shore. That's that's all I can do, man. Right. And maybe I can t give you some instructions about how to swim once you get out of the water. Next time you're in the water, swim like this. But most of <laughs> you got to find it within yourself to, to care enough about your own life and your own dreams to get yourself back up and keep fighting and let life decide what you cannot do. Wow. I will not, I will not cooperate in my own defeat. You right. know, I go down swinging. You know, that is the one thing I've got, man. You can't stop me. You can kill me, but you cannot stop me. If you, I will, I'll curl up in a ball and cry, but then I will dry my eyes, get up, and hit it again tomorrow. Right. That's just the way I am because I know I'm going to die, and I want my life to mean something. Right. So the one other question yeah. that you can look at all of the stuff that, um, that you've produced Clearly, you've had to do a lot of collaborations. And in many instances, you've had to collaborate with people you may not necessarily agree with. And so you've learned some <laughs> lessons. You've created some incredible pieces of art. And you've had to go through this collaboration process. What kind of lessons can you give us in how to, how to participate in that process? You know, you don't have to like somebody to carry a log with them. Right. So you, you keep your attention on the outcome. Right. Okay, so it's like... I don't want. I don't get the wrong feeling about this. Right. I love Jerry Pornell. Right. You know, genuinely loved him. But we could not have disagreed more about politics. Of course. But our philosophies of life were not that different. They were close enough that we were able to 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 get each other to, right. to, to get that. So I remember when I was working on the first book with Larry and Jerry, The Legacy of Herod, and Jerry. I don't know how many human beings have ever in history had two world-class writers on opposite sides of the room exactly. rip their prose apart at the same time. Ah. Be like cackling. <laughs> I'm eviscerating Barnes's precious prose. <laughs> Did your, was your mother scared by a gerund Barnes? You know, just, you know, I mean, it was, I literally would drive home in tears. Right. Hey, but here's what it is. I knew that if I could survive that, I would learn things I could not learn in any school in the world. It was just like wow. being invited into the black belt class to spar. You got the living mm -hmm. hell out of you, but you learn lessons you could not learn any other way. So you have to ask yourself, what's more important, being comfortable or being good? Right. Getting so, it right or thinking you've got it right. Right. So and, to go back and, to the beginning, we were talking yes. about, you can help me again. I have two kids. Yeah. And I really want to teach them the principles of the law of attraction. Yeah. And I've read your journey with your son and you, you, you know, you've really helped him change things, but how do we teach our kids this? Because okay. we're also dealing with their egos that don't part of their egos don't want this information. I see it with my kids, the glaze over when I know I'm giving them very fundamental information that's going to save their life. Yeah. How do we teach our kids this? Okay, look, man, I'm still in the process of it. My daughter is 32, and right. she, she's done fine. But she never really fought me. You know, you know, she would practice martial arts, and she'd do this, and she'd do that. She fought with her mom more. So I, I, I don't know. She, Nikki came out just great. I, I adore my daughter. Jason and I butt heads. Okay, mm -hmm. So I, it, let's assume that we've got him on the proper trajectory, you know, right. more or less, uh, so that I can make some comments here without saying, without being a prognosticator. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I do have confidence that I can face those challenges because I will take action. I will have gratitude. I'll have a clear intention right. and I will have confidence, you know? So it's like, I have to have that belief, <laughs> but, but let's put that aside and we'll talk about a couple of things. First of all, there's a book that I really like called how to double your child's grades in five minutes a day. Okay a marketer named Eugene Schwartz. I was told to look up Eugene Schwartz for a book he did on marketing that is out of print. And there was this other book that was uh, uh, out of print, but it was available on Amazon as, a, as an out of print book. It was cheap, called you know, How to Double Your Child's Grades in Five Minutes a Day. I said, and, and it had try it, yeah. views on it were excellent. Mm -hmm. People were saying, this is great, man, I wish I'd had this. And, oh my God, this is so wonderful. And I said, well, this has got to be bullshit. 
Mm -hmm. But I'm certainly willing to risk five bucks to find out what it is. And what it was based on is his marketing principle. The, 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 when it comes right down to it, it's you spend, you spend five minutes every day, first thing in the morning, going over the homework, over what he has to do, and you make sure that it's totally positive. Right. Totally positive. This is a time of love and support, nothing but positive reinforcement. And so, and then the rest of the book, you know, it has very specific instructions on how to teach and learn this, 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 and this. The only part of it I've really been able to incorporate with Jason is that five minutes a day, mm -hmm. totally positive, first thing in the morning, big hug, so proud of you. What do we need to accomplish today? And then what I would say is have some basic set of principles. Now, I have tried so many things. I've tried Musashi Miyamoto's Book of Five Rings, is, you know, do not think this honestly in the way it's training and right. become acquainted with every art. And, you know, and, and that five minutes, I mean, I, I actually had a morning ritual with Jason that went back to, went back for eight years, you know, but I, what I was doing was this was at a period of time when he'd been, when been diagnosed as being, uh, having ADHD and borderline right. autism. And so I would have him sit, and we would sit cross-legged facing each other, match, and I would match our breathing. So we're breathing in the same pattern. And I would have him hold my eyes. I'd have him look in my eyes. And he couldn't look in my eyes at first. You know, uh -huh. autistic people have that problem. Mm -hmm. So what I do is every time he looked away from my eyes, I would pinch his hand. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, the first when it first started, I would smack his hand. Um, but as time went on, I could just... I could just put pressure on his thumbs when he looked away and just bring his eyes back to mind. We just, did, just for five minutes, just breathing together, just being present together. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're not alone. I'm here with you. I love you. I will never let you go. No matter what happens, That's I will great. never let you go. I am here for you. When I, mm -hmm. I, and I love you. And you are my boy. Mm -hmm. You know. And But but just this, this last year, we finally got his... He'd had some real problems with his academics we did not realize that he was having a problem with his reading because the school would not tell us what his grades were and oh, so okay. i was i was homicidally furious by the time i found out how far in the hole he was so it was like okay we gotta you know let, let's work with it let's work with it let's work with it. Right. this last semester you know we finally got all of his grades passing you know just all of them so now he can play and, and the and the breakthrough was when he decided he wanted to play football one of his friends wanted to play football and he wanted to be with his friends. So he wanted to play football. And now his, his natural athleticism, which he's got in plenty, uh, is connected with his academics because if he doesn't keep uh -huh. up, he can't play. Right. So he also started noticing that the girls were noticing him. So now his <laughs> hormones are starting to kick in and it's the, you know, it's the question, the eternal question, what is it going to take for me to become an adult? The uh, you know, adult, being an adult means being paying your own bills, being responsible for your emotions, and having adult funds like sex. Right. You know, and what I will say to him, sex is an adult pleasure that you do not start your sexual journey until you could conceivably support a child that came out of that. Right. You know? So that's, you know, to me, I put, you know, um, Tony Robbins talks about uh, his RPM program, talks about you have to know what you want and then why you would only after getting clear on what you want and why you want it to be think right. about how you're going to do it. So to-do lists are crap. Right. To be clear what you want and why you want it. So what I wanted from him was for him to get his grades up, for him to care about his academics. Yeah. So I got it. So um, the picture looks frozen. No. Yeah, my picture okay, is you're back. a little bit. Right, we're back. Okay. So um, okay. just on a lighter side, Steve has almost the identical taste in movies as I do. I, I, one thing I love to do when, I, when a big movie comes out is I'll keep an eye on Facebook for Steve's review. And a lot of times it's going to be different or he's going to see things that I just didn't notice. I've learned so much. I'm a huge movie buff. So I got to ask you, can you recommend a movie that I probably haven't seen? Do you have a movie out there? That that I probably haven't seen that I that I, that I should check out. 
Let me think about that. Um, in something in the theater, something on, on. Um, well, I you know binge the 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 Netflix series Bodyguard, British series Bodyguard, not bad at all. I haven't seen that they one. Really, no, really liked it. Right. Um, I I thought I thought it worked very nicely. Um, let me think. You know, in terms of in terms of movies, uh, you know, this year. You know, I've I've seen there have been a number of movies this year that I really liked, but some of them are, are pretty trivial. You know, stuff like, uh, you know, uh, you know, Avengers Endgame. Really, yeah, really right. enjoyed Endgame. Hated Infinity War. You hated you know, Infinity War, story. right? Yeah, yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> um, and uh, I really liked, I really loved Jordan Peele's Us. Uh, mm-hmm. It was not. You know, I would say that that his first movie, uh, Get Out, was about ninety nine percent successful. I'd say that Us was only about ninety percent successful, but he was aiming at something much bigger, which right. means that we were seeing a, a larger amount of talent and intelligence and in and, and story craftsmanship and, and, and filmmaking on the screen. Yeah, uh, he was trying something much bigger, and if it wasn't wholly as wholly successful, it was still a holy crap. I, I still enjoyed it. Yeah, do that. Oh, oh it yeah. was more than just enjoyable. It was one of those. This guy might be the real deal. And right. For a movie of that quality or anything close to it, and I'm going to declare him to be one of those modern geniuses of, of, of horror that we yeah. for. You know, he'll be, you know, I'll be I'll be looking I'll be discussing him in the same breath with John Carpenter. And, right. Have you have you seen the Twilight Zone uh, episodes? Yes, and Twilight Zone struck me. I if you've seen the entire season. I've certainly seen a couple episodes. I still need to get through the rest. I, I, I don't want to say too much about it. I strongly suggest that you do that. Okay. Because I think that the last episode, when you've seen the last episode, reach out to me and tell me your impressions. I don't want to say too much about it, but I think that they're on the right track. Right, uh, okay. There were about three episodes of that season that I thought really hit it, and mm-hmm. there were several episodes where I thought, they're, you know, they've, they've made the subtext the text. They're just hitting the hail. They're hitting the nail squarely on the thumb here. Right. You don't need to beat me over the head with this. Just tell me the damn story. Right. Um, and but what I will say is that I think that the that the season um, the season came out very nicely. Um, and I'm, I don't, I'm definitely that. season two is coming. I think for sure. They think they've already yeah, got yeah, season they, two coming. Got yeah. the next season. So you know, Jordan Peele is, uh, I think, the real deal. So Hollywood, if you're out there. There are a ton of books that Stephen Barnes has written, and you need to make these into movies. The Kundalini Equation is a good one to start with. I know that that's a very popular, but you have so many alternative histories. Did you, and, did you know that Twelve Days, my most recent solo novel, Twelve is Days is is is, 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 the equation. is the is that a sequel? Yes, to, it is. Okay, it didn't say. And I was looking at that, and I was like, I you had mentioned that a sequel was coming out, and the other day I was like. Kundalini Equation sequel, and I saw Twelve Days. I, it's, it's on my list. I'm going to be reading that. So, awesome. <laughs> what? Um, somebody even on Facebook told me to ask you if you had tried the breathing exercises in Kundalini Equation. I don't remember when I read that if there was specific breathing. I remember the whole process. And he, um, did you ever try those, or that was just for the purpose of the fiction? <laughs> I don't. I remember uh, there was. Uh, a, uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, let's just say. That there is more reality in that book it, than there people is. believe. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that I put things in there directly because there are there are breathing exercises, there are meditative exercises that are not that are effective but not safe. D- but not safe. Safe but not effective. Right. What Adam Ludlam did in that book was tiptoeing into the category of hyper effective but not safe. I would right. never give the instructions for such things. Point blank. Point blank. I would always <laughs> obfuscate. Well, there's there's a good commentary you're making in that book Ooh. about the the addiction to technique. You can become so yeah. addicted to technique that you kind of lose yourself a little bit. Well, you can lose. You can yeah. become addicted to the action. You know, the, right. the, if you have to ask yourself, what are you? What is it about? I mean, I the the question. Why do we do anything that we do? Um, to me, you start with um, the ultimate intent, you know, the meaning of life, to be happy, mm-hmm. to seek joy, to escape pain, to escape misery and find joy. Everything else is a means to that end. And you want to do it long term and, you know, you want to do it to being of service to mankind and, you know, and stuff right. like that. But you never forget that. So when people, you know, money, m- the, the, the most valuable thing about money is not bringing pleasure, it's escaping pain. 
you know, it's having a roof over your head, food on your table, and basic medical care, and basic transportation. Right. The things that will cause you harm. Once you've got those things taken care of, the utility of money starts dropping. You know, and to to once you've got those things, if you are sacrificing your family to make money, you're a fool. Right. You know, that, that I'm sorry, it is not worth missing one day of helping my son get off to school to make an extra hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, that may be a slight exaggeration. <laughs> maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. maybe one day. <laughs> I'm talking, wait a minute, I'm lying here. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'd do it for one day. Because my wife can handle it. But, right. But not if it diminished his sense of self. Not if he was thinking, where is my dad? Because I grew up without a father, and it created a, a hole in my heart that mm -hmm. it took decades to fill. And I will not have my son or my daughter go through that. Whatever they face in their lives, they're going to know their dad adored them. Their dad was willing to do whatever it took, anything that's it took. That is, that's the bottom line. I may fail, but I'll fail because I didn't have it, not because yeah. I didn't. Well, I just want to thank you for being so gracious with your time. I'm a small podcast, and you easily could have said not right now. So thank you for... Do me a favor. Yeah. Yeah, send me a copy of this. Oh, yeah. I will. I, I promise. Yeah, the video. I, I promise. Send me a copy. And, and just to everybody, um, we were talking a little bit about um, horror films, and you have uh, a, a webinar that you offer, um, SunkenPlaceClass.com. Yeah. Yes, SunkenPlaceClass.com. SunkenPlaceClass.com. And you and your wife, Tana Reeve, discuss a lot of the implications and, and, and horror, and it's very, very interesting. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's, multiple, it's a class, right? You have multiple – you talk about some different issues, and yep. it looks super fascinating. I recommend that. I recommend all of Steve's books. Look for them on Facebook. There's so much more I could learn. We'll have to do this again. It's maybe hopefully someday. But thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll be sure to send this to you. And welcome to the fun. Reality Revolution. Um, my pleasure and good luck to you. And remember to take action, have gratitude, have a clear intention, and never lose confidence. Thank Always you. believe in yourself. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Hold on.